India is a place littered with incredible ancient yet unexplained ruins. Intricate ancient carvings can be found dotting the cliff faces. Seemingly laser-cut caves hewn from enormous rocks, and perhaps the most impressive of its collection, the rock temples hewn straight from bedrock, which can be found all over the country. We recently focused our attention on one of these sites in particular, perhaps the most impressive of these ancient temples. Known as Kailash, it is a structure drenched in sculpted animals and religious idols. Many others also exist, somehow carved straight out of stone hillsides. The accuracy in which these structures were carved, the refined finish achieved, has allowed these structures to evade explanation to this day. There is, in fact, another site within India, another temple, that, just like Kailash, was somehow hewn from a solid hillside. However, what is particularly interesting regarding this temple is that it was mysteriously abandoned leaving the apparent different stages of its construction for all to see. Known as Vetavan Coil, it is located within Kalagumalai, a panchayat town in the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Intriguingly, upon the structure and the carved walls which it is now framed by, is the same telltale chisel marks found at so many other sites around the world, an anomaly we have already covered in depth. However, what is particularly interesting regarding Vetivan Coil is the fact that these crude marks are also accompanied by the seemingly impossible perfect finished sculptures, which mystify all who peer at them to this day. It is a visual, chronological timeline cast in stone, possibly left by an as yet unknown people, using unexplained yet amazing artistic skills. The temple seemingly displays the methods used to carve it. The artist responsible crudely chiseled the design, presumably somehow from the mind's eye, then somehow professionally worked into the refined, astonishing art which adorned so many of these ancient Indian structures. Who built Vetivan Coil? How did they achieve such perfection, with such hard stones, at such an early time in history? Is it, like academia would have you believe, a mere 1400 years old? Or is it a far more ancient structure, built using as yet unknown stone working techniques? used by an unknown group of artists. As research mounts surrounding such sites, the answers will inevitably be discovered. The 16th century Kerala's temple located within India used to be the royal chapel of Travancore's former rulers. It shot to fame five years ago when one of its six vaults, later coded as A, was opened unearthing tons of gold coins jewelry and diamonds worth hundreds of millions of dollars. An expert panel, inventorying assets at Kerala's famous Sri Padmanabhaswarmi temple, has approached the Supreme Court for permission to open an as yet untouched vault, a vault containing unimaginable fortunes, a face-off between the judiciary and religious authorities. The temple, situated in the heart of India, is billed as the country's richest and is one of several Hindu shrines that hold enormous amounts of gold and precious gems. The wealth was accumulated by way of holy offering from devotees over many years. The temple contains six chambers buried deep under its sanctum sanctorum. Two of them are open during daily rituals and two more every six months. The remaining two, A and B, are secret vaults. Sources close to the temple said antique coins found in the chambers alone weighed more than 600 kilograms. Around 200,000 items were documented, 600 of which were embedded with precious gems. One single locket alone was believed to contain 997 gems. Besides jewels, precious stones, necklaces, golden crowns and pots were also included in the list of inventory sources said. According to the India Times, an audit conducted into the assets shows that a massive amount of gold has mysteriously disappeared. Up to 769 gold pots and silver bars have been reported missing. 
some suggesting that there are hidden tunnels beneath the chamber which allowed the architects to lock the chamber doors from within, making it impossible to breach. This secret tunnel seems to have led to many years of plundering the treasure trove without anyone noticing. However, what has not been publicly acknowledged by the Indian court is the existence of the hidden inner chamber beyond Vault B. Reported as having thick walls made from solid gold, and it is where the real treasure is said to be located. Dwarfing what has been recovered so far, it could quite possibly contain the largest undiscovered treasure in the history of the world. Not only is the temple covered in gold, it seems it is also stuffed full of the stuff also. An expert panel from the Center for Earth Science Studies has also quashed rumors that the Bee Vault has an underground tunnel connected to the Arabian Sea. The team led by Dr. Ajakumar Verma detected small cavities and drains around cellars that they found insignificant. Chamber B is not part of the temple's official treasury. The holy chamber houses idols of gods and many other valuables meant to enhance the potency of the principal deity. Also found was a pure golden throne adorned with hundreds of diamonds and fully precious stones, meant for the seating of a past giant that has been estimated around 18 feet in height. In addition, many other large, sometimes giant and very old solid gold crowns were found, all studded with diamonds and other precious stones. The valuables are believed to have been accumulated in the temple's vaults over several thousand years, having been donated to the gods by various dynasties and kings. We will keep you posted on what they find in Vault B. India is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of ancient sculpture. And although Rome is home to the Renaissance, an attraction which lures enormous numbers of people there every year, India is unquestionably home to sculpture, which would put even the most efficient of the Italian masters to shame. However, conveniently, academia, and thus most of the modern world, overlook these astonishing feats of ancient art in favor of less controversial artistic wonders. One of our tried and tested methods of establishing whether an ancient artifact, or indeed an ancient ruin, attributed to a less capable, more modern imposter, is actually evidence of forgotten lost knowledge, is finding the puzzling accomplishments often hidden within the architecture or construction. One of the many examples of these is polygonal masonry. And although the modern man does indeed practice this lost art, a good example of this being found within the Cotswolds in the UK, known as Cotswold Dry Stone Walling, once built and still used to mark out very ancient land boundaries, and amazingly, longer than the Great Wall of China. These very old walls, created without the use of mortar, are compelling examples of a fragmented technique either borrowed or, possibly intriguingly, leftover memories of a now forgotten technology. And although these more modern attempts range in age stretching far into thousands of years, the lesser capability of the builders is clear for all to see. Our point being that when these ancient walls stretching far before the Romans are compared to Mesoamerica, Peruvian, and indeed ancient Indian ruins, the exquisite polygonal architecture, the precise carving and stone building present, are clear, strong, controversial evidences of a forgotten civilization. How did these ancient builders acquire such a sophisticated knowledge and awareness of stone shapes, and the subsequent placement of each stone, perfectly placed against one another, forming impenetrable barriers which have stood the tests of the ages? We feel that, regardless of what academia claims is the truth, pertaining to the origin and creators of these ancient wonders, the skills required to create them are thankfully beginning to become apparent to the majority rather than the few. This ancient, forgotten people clearly attained a level of stoneworking and construction knowledge we are yet to acquire. Clearly, a far more advanced and capable people than we are today let alone the modern historical imposters academia claims as the culprits. We feel, regardless of others' claims, the evidence to suggest an intercontinental, highly advanced, technologically superior civilization once flourished here on our planet is highly compelling.
While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people place far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten, could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework, seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation, originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine task with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. Just how old is human civilization? It should be clear to anyone who has spent any length of time perusing our channel that the majority of our antiquity, no matter how astonishing, is, according to modern academia, all built by our less capable ancestors place considerably more recently within human history. During our extensive research, we have often unearthed overwhelming evidence for an immensely larger human timeline. Additionally, we feel there is strong evidence to suggest that more than one period of prosperity has been experienced in the past. We have realized that this record of past global inhabitancy is merely limited to its resistance to erosion. Put another way, there appears that many past civilizations have come and gone, going back beyond what is now still in existence. The human species, it seems, has outlived the existence of our oldest ruins here on Earth. Many ruins we have explored are now argued as geological formations. This authoritative subjection is merely testament to their immense age, and also begs the question what other ruins may have been lost to erosion. How much older does human civilization actually reach back in time? And just how advanced have past civilizations become? 
One clue to this answer lays within the ruins themselves. Astonishing feats of engineering that not only indicate a high level of intelligence, but also technological prowess. Extraordinarily refined works, which can still be found in the less inhospitable environments of Earth. One of these lesser shared sites is undoubtedly Varangal. Located within the South Indian state of Telangana, it was predictably once snapped up by our less capable ancestors, possibly claimed as their own, subsequently becoming their capital. Home of the Kakatiya dynasty from the 12th to 14th centuries, this inhabitation, we feel, has then been used regardless of the ancient ruins in question to age the stone carvings which can be found at the site. Stone monuments carved with such accuracy, skill, and precision that they evade any logical explanation as to how they could have been completed with any of the technologies we know were available to the Kakatians, specifically within the 12th century. The site clearly demonstrates tremendous skill and also technological prowess. These stone monuments were clearly not only created to express an artistic message, but they were undoubtedly created to display the creator's capabilities, encapsulated in time, quite possibly for the exact purpose of people like us to recognize them, as they may have with similar ruins that were possibly in existence during their own lifetimes. There is a greatly more interesting and extensively larger story to tell regarding the history of our planet. However, as long as those in power feel inadequate simply saying, we don't know. Ignorance and lies will continue to plague our species. We've often put forward the premise that within our very distant past, a cataclysm occurred, or more precisely, a great flood. Many surviving ancient sites around the world bear the scars of this event. The Great Pyramids of Giza, for example, still held chambers flooded with ancient seawater deep within their bowels until very recently. Much of this evidence slowly removed over the past few decades. And our next ancient structure is no different. Known as Adams Bridge, it is an astonishing feature which stretches 30 kilometers, connecting southern India with Sri Lanka, believed to date from a pre-Diluvian age some 1.7 million years ago. Several individuals who have taken the time to explore this ancient ruin have concluded that it is indeed artificial. However, with a dating of over 1.5 million years, it is clearly a site that academia will continue to reject as actually being man-made, regardless of the mounting data in favor of such a reality. It seems that regardless of the overwhelming evidence that the mountain of unexplained accomplishments by our quote, primitive ancestors, modern scholars of many subjects continue an existence in complete denial of these truths. Dr. Bajra Narayanan, former director of the Geological Survey within India, performed an in-depth analysis of the suspected bridge's makeup. His research concluded that the Adams Bridge was indeed an artificial man-made structure, one which stretches far back into the unknown history of our planet. Below the surface, they found organized layers of sandstone blocks, coral boulders, and other cement-like substances. Several divers investigated the length of the bridge and concluded that its entire layout was indeed of an organized and thus artificial nature. The survey also revealed extremely ancient evidence of intense quarrying was also left within the surrounding area, these materials matching those placed carefully within the causeway itself. Interestingly, ancient Hindu legend from the area agrees that this enormous feature is indeed a now-submerged, gigantic earthwork, stating that it was built for the god Rama in order to help him cross the land to the large island, to rescue his beloved from a demon. Is Adam's Bridge really a huge pre-Diluvian sunken artifact? a 30-kilometer man-made bridge which once connected the two countries? It's an amazing proposition, and the more we learn about the amazing history which was lost here on our planet, the more it seems like a real possibility. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Many inventions found throughout the world have their origins set in the Far East. Many machines that different nations claim as their own can often be found to have primitive traces of development many centuries earlier within China, and our next artifact is no exception. Dating back over 2,000 years, this rare and enigmatic piece of once very high technology can only be seen as a demonstration of their superior ingenuity. 
it seems the invention of the first seismoscope can be traced back to 132 AD, when a Chinese inventor called Chang Heng perfected a device remarkably accurate at detecting earthquakes, even from afar. Although the ancient Chinese did not fully understand the cause of earthquakes, they did see it as very important to keep track of such events, perceiving these disturbances with cosmic yin and yang. It was, therefore, important for the Chinese emperor to be alerted of any earthquakes occurring anywhere in their kingdom. Chang's ingenious seismoscope was almost six feet across and made of solid bronze, decorated with eight dragons marking compass directions. Within each dragon's mouth was a small bronze ball, and beneath sat eight bronze toads. A mechanism within would somehow detect an earthquake occurring in the distance. This would then cause a ball to drop out of one of the eight dragons' mouths. What is fascinating regarding Chang's invention is the fact that no one seems to be able to figure out for a certainty how it worked. One theory is that a thin stick set loosely down the center of the barrel. When an earthquake occurred, a stick would topple over in the direction of the seismic shock. According to legend, when Chang first showed his invention to the emperor, it indicated that a quake had occurred to the west of Luyang, the capital city at the time. A few days later, a messenger from the region arrived reporting that there had indeed been an earthquake there, around the time Chang's machine had indicated. When specialists first realized what the machine was, they struggled to believe that this 2,000-year-old invention could actually work. So, in 2005, scientists in Zhenzhou, China used it to detect several earthquakes. The seismoscope detected all of them. In fact, the data gathered from this 2,000-year-old machine corresponded with that gathered by modern-day seismometers. A marvelous machine left to us by a once ingenious civilization. Osaka Castle, one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16 centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. The main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia, these sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques, a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another, with incredible precision, stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, there not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. Perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis, 
that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Qulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization, responsible for all the other as yet unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force? with the slight variations present from location to location only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking. Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world, spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly? Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? Regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination, we feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many aspects of ancient ruins which can indicate a far more advanced technologically capable constructor than are currently academically attested. Massive, seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks precisely placed within their constructions. Advanced weight-bearing architecture that could have only been understood by a civilization with a far more knowledgeable set of building strategies than those claimed as the culprit, our own well-studied more recent ancestors. Precision tool marks that could have only been left by high-rotating precision machinery etched and worked into notoriously hard stone, stones such as granite, that thanks to its erosion resistance, still possess these clear evidential scars, left by these enigmatic machines, leaving us to ponder and academia to ignore. Mysterious alignments, often created using enormous stones, that, according to the history books, were placed by groups of ancestors who simply couldn't have known these precise precision alignments, let alone worship them with such megalith stonework. Metal clamps used the world over to latch these enormous blocks together, used by a mysterious civilization, who were somehow aware of the fact that these stones would shift as the years went on. With many of these clamps cast into place, this hypothesis Supported by the evidence of vitrification upon the surface of the stonework, strong evidence of a civilization that had mastered the control of immense heats, reminiscent of modern-day refineries, with the rare example of a massive upart, like the giant glass Bess Shearim slab, further supporting this past mastery of extreme temperature refinement. Yet, the most notable and most numerous proof of this past lost civilization, and indeed their forgotten technology, is polygonal masonry. 
with some of this stonework clearly of such a great antiquity that it is slowly losing its recognizable form. One of these forgotten sites is Ori Castle, found deep within the forests of Japan. Located on Shiroyama Mountain, it was named after its supposed builder, Mitsutada Ori, who was the leader of a clan also named after him, the Ori clan. Ori and his clan originally stemmed from the Toki clan, but once expelled from their land and left to wander, Mitsutada recovered their land in 1536 and supposedly built a new castle on the mountain. However, due to the as yet unexplained polygonal masonry and also its clearly incredible age, we tend to believe that Mitsutada merely rediscovered this fortress within the forests on the mountains and used them to regain a foothold within the area, thus naming the castle after his efforts. The true age of the castle, we feel, is unknown, although we strongly suspect that it predates many of the other anomalous polygonal masonry that can be found within Japan, such as the foundations of Osaka Castle, an astonishing group of features we have covered previously. However, due to the sheer age of the ruin of Ori Castle, the stonework has eroded to such a degree that it takes a keen eye and a few years of practice to be able to identify it as having once been the same level of precise polygonal masonry as that found elsewhere within Japan. Who built Ori Castle? Was it really abandoned mid-build as academia claims? Or was it, like we postulate, simply left to ruin, a relic of a now forgotten civilization left to simply erode away? eventually to a point where geology will argue it away as a mere natural formation. We find Ori Castle, and indeed the many other enigmatic sites to be found within Japan, quietly kept away from curious minds throughout the world as undoubtedly highly compelling. My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts, and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics, often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others' work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations, ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations, many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence who not only share my view that much of the history currently being taught to future generations is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious lair, a brief prologue is as follows, quote, 
Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a lair which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers. End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet, due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence. I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history, they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907, although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua Manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, there are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past, vastly more advanced civilization, copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas, meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection. Yet this piece in itself is an exact, accurate plotting of polar constellations, and due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered, copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907, one of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel their lack of public exposure and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars, not only proving that although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, 
the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presumed the world was flat, they somehow assumed that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure as highly compelling. Bazda Cave, within modern-day Turkey, is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hairan. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hairan, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites – Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India – the roof of a precision-cut cave and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight, which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, 
due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life, and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake, not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bazda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bazda cave to another similarly gigantic, artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bazda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical uh, Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone-cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, 
used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claimed to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling.